transition to some hockey. Obviously, a fantastic first half of the season. They, uh, you know, two losses and a shootout loss this weekend as the second half of the season is upon us. But nobody, nobody's pushing the panic button. But you say it might be a good thing. I, I, I do. I think it, it's a good thing. I mean, nobody expected them to win every game. And, and you really, with such a young team, too, I think you want to go through some slumps. Because you sure as heck don't want your first slump coming in the first round of the playoffs or the second round of the playoffs. And when you have no idea how guys will react to it. You want to have that experience behind you of knowing how guys are going to react. It's like, ah, oh, we got through this before. We'll get through this again type of thing. And a lot of these guys have never, ever been through this. So I, I look at it as, as, as it's an opportunity for them to learn and, and uh, maybe tighten up some things. And I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Plus, you know, this week you've got four days of practice. They haven't had four days of practice Wow, 1st of December, maybe? I mean, it's been a while. Yeah, as a full team. It's this is not a bad thing. I mean. One of the things they'll obviously be working on is, is trying to put the puck in the net a little bit. Uh, you know, only one goal in Friday's game, only one goal in Saturday's game, uh, three against Missouri. But what was it offensively that wasn't, wasn't really clicking for them this weekend, you think? Well, they got to get the, the puck play. up. I mean, you know, how many times did they shoot it along the ice and, you know, just raise the puck up a little bit sometimes, you know? I mean, look at that power play on Friday night where they had the two-minute, uh, two-man advantage. I mean, they had some glorious chances there. And how many times did every puck just, you know, bounce just off of their stick or they put it right in his pads or, you know, it's like they were feeling the pressure by the end of that power play. But they had seven, eight glorious scoring chances. I mean, if they score one, and then if they get one on the, the next power play right after that, it's a different game completely. Power play this weekend, not, not the best. I mean, the numbers will even themselves out over the course of the season, so you're not dramatically worried. But the thing I was, I mean, they're getting chances. They're getting really good chances, too. I mean, there was a lot of guys in front getting rebounds. I mean, if you weren't getting chances, that's when you're really worried about the power play. But they were still getting very good chances. They just weren't scoring. Yeah, 2 of 17, not great considering you come in leading the league, converting about 25%. So that was certainly kind of a surprise, but, you know. Especially with happens. the chances you had, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, every one of those guys would say that they would score 50% of the time on those chances, you know. Conversely, though, penalty kill still very good. Oh, 12 of 13 excellent. this past week. Five weekend. out of 55. Pretty impressive. That's not too shabby. What's been the key for them in that this season? Because when we talk about special teams, most people want to talk about goal scored and power play. Well, penalty kill just as important. Well, okay, early in the season, you remember how often opponents scored on those backdoor plays. They're not getting the backdoor plays anymore. It's like the defensemen know now they're comfortable with the system and what they're supposed to do, and those are just those have just evaporated. Um, in fact, I think there's a – got to look it up, but, I mean, it, there's a chance they might have given up as many shorthanded goals as they've allowed power play goals. Really? That would be amazing. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, that's how good the, power, the penalty kill has been. I mean, I know they've given up more chances on shorthanded goals than they have on power play goals against. I mean, because they were giving up a ton of shorthanded chances there for a long time. So – now, for the first time this season, we really need to take a look at the injury situation because there, it looks like they're going to be adding at least one guy this week. Uh, not sure who that's going to be. So talk about what we've got right now as far as injured players go because some of them are tough to call based yeah. on the fact that they're concussions, Brett Smith being, of course, the most obvious. Oh, Chris OJ. Mm -hmm. he, he, I think he was going to start skating today. Um, now, with Chris, okay, say he gets better by the end of the week. I think you still sit him another week just to make double darn sure his head's great, you know. And I think uh, Dustin Molly, he's got sore groin muscles. And uh, same thing, I think you let him feel good for an extra week before you put him back out again because you sure don't want You want to get this healed. You don't want to be, uh, you know, make it a stopgap measure. Well, okay, you feel good today, you're going to play today. You don't want to get into that cycle. And Brett Smith, I think they're going to be careful. And, I mean, he was pretty bad after the game. Friday night, so we'll wait and see what happens. And Kaylee's knee, how's that? Uh, I haven't talked to Kaylee, uh, but he played last night. Mm -hmm. I think he amazed all the guys that he did play. He got hit with a shot Saturday night in Evansville. Um, you know, I think the only way to hurt Kaylee is to hit him in the head with a shot. You know, I mean, tough kid. Oh, he's amazing. I mean, he just wants to play and win so bad. Never runs out of energy. He will chase a puck down. He'll get in the corner. He's good like that. Yeah, that's he, why the fans love him. Yeah. Plus, it doesn't hurt that he's from Fort Wayne either. Um, as far as, you know, new players, 
I know we don't know who they're bringing in. Any names out there that you think? I haven't had a chance to check. They're, you know, you do the same thing every time in this situation. You look at the waiver wire. You look who's available. Um, I'm sure they'll get resumes from players today and tomorrow from agents of who's available. That kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'm of the belief it's not a bad thing to play shorthanded sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought they played much better yesterday than they did Saturday and Friday. Um, sometimes when you play shorthanded, it pulls your team together further, and nobody thinks about what they're doing. They just play the system and just play. It makes it easy. You know, you're not trying to mix in the extra forward sometime and keep everybody happy. You just go out and roll the lines and let it go. All right, so this weekend, three games, three days. Tulsa in on Friday and on Saturday, and then Quad City, who's an up and cover. Great game for yeah. a Sunday game. That's going to be a really good one. So looking at this week, what do you see as the biggest keys as they come out with two in a row against a Tulsa team that's fifth in their conference but has a winning record? Yeah, they're pretty good, um, which it's amazing when you, you look at Tulsa's roster and it's always a bunch of guys you've never heard of because they have a different budgetary system with the way they work their team, and they always look for the younger guys first. And um, so you know they're going to, and you know Rammer's coaching them, so you know they're going to play hard and they're going to go all the way to the end. Um, and they're probably looking at this as there's no pressure coming in either. There'll be a big crowd and, and they'll be like, okay, fine, we'll just go out and play. You know, I mean, and so they're dangerous that way too. Um, it's just, it's a fascinating stat. The comments, I believe, are 16 2 and 1 when they score first, and the opponents are 6 9 and 1 when they score first. So, I mean, really, if the Comets can get on a consistent thing of scoring first, it would help themselves. They would help themselves considerably. That's funny. Colin Chalk mentioned that exact same thing last week at practice. And well, what's he know about there. hockey? Come yeah, on. yeah. Who do you think told him he's all not, that? He's not, you know, he's not I a mean, professional yeah, journalist. Yeah, come on. Digging deep. You know. Uh, well, that'll do it for this week's edition <laughs> of Inside the Zone. Hopefully, Colin doesn't watch because uh, he'll probably. Oh, I'll hear about it either way. Yeah, you know there that. You go. I mean. Might as well put the target right here. <laughs> hey, better you than me. He's Blake Sievering for the new Sentinel. I'm Glenn Marini, and we'll see you again next week talking common hockey.